right now on five on your side at 10. Storm alert comes to an end tonight, but the gusty winds linger into Wednesday. We're tracking one more storm chance this week. Fire forces a dozen people from their apartments. A dog rescued from the flames. Tonight, the possible cause neighbors are pointing to. Remembering the white rat. He brought Whitey Ball in a World Series championship to St. Louis. We wanted to win and wanted us to enjoy in St. Louis and bring another championship. He would just tell it like it is, but he was always right. Tonight, former players, fans, and baseball historians reflect on the life and career of Whitey Herzog. First tonight, the threat of severe weather is now over after a round of showers and thunderstorms moved through the bi-state earlier this evening. Good evening, I'm Mike Bush. Kelly Jackson has the night off. The forecast had us on alert today, but you can rest easy tonight. Let's get straight over to Chief Meteorologist Scott Connell with that weather first forecast. You know, the breeze is going to stay up overnight tonight, but the threat of severe weather, that is not in our cards for the rest of the night into tomorrow. In fact, the thunderstorms that were off to our north and west, you can see them there from the St. Charles and from the Chesterfield weather cameras. We were watching those storms tracking northeast. They just really couldn't do much. That's a storm cell that actually went between Mexico, Missouri, and Centralia, Missouri, and that's the one that's lifted up east of Hannibal and is out of the picture now. Everything else is well south and east of us. We will remain quiet here through the evening hours, but there were some reports of hail and some wind damage reported today from those storms, but they were pretty isolated and mostly from that initial wave of storms that was out to our west around lunchtime. This is a big storm system, so it has a lot of wind wrapping around it, which means tomorrow we will be looking at breezy conditions once again, just not quite as windy as what we saw today. Breezy and mild overnight, then bright, breezy and dry tomorrow. More storms are likely Thursday. We'll talk more about that, Mike, in a few minutes. Tonight, we're remembering one of the most popular figures in St. Louis sports history. Former Cardinals manager Whitey Herzog has died at the age of 92. He died after a short illness less than two weeks after taking part in the Cardinals home opener. The beloved Hall of Fame skipper from New Athens, Illinois, managed the Cardinals for 11 seasons, leading the Redbirds to three pennants and a World Series championship in the 1980s. Sports director Frank Cusimano is here with more on the man who brought us Whitey Ball, he will really be missed. He really will, Mike. And all you really need to know about the popularity of Whitey Herzog is what happened every year at the Bragging Rights game. They would show governors, senators, and sports dignitaries on the Jumbotron. They would get modest applause. Then Whitey's face would pop up, and the roar was incredible. He was one of us. He grew up here. He liked beer and hot dogs, and it didn't hurt. He was also arguably the best manager in the league. He also had great relationships with his players. Maybe not warm and fuzzy, but professional and fun. He put in his style, which was based on speed and defense, and he let them go. It's amazing how long after their careers ended, he remains friends with them. Fished with him and hunted with him. And, but when you're a friend of Whitey, uh, you're more of a psychologist just listening <laughs> and observing and maybe asking a few questions within an hour if you can get them in. Well, he didn't have many rules. He had two rules, show up on time and bust your tail when you're there. He just had that demeanor about him that you wanted to play hard for the guy. And uh, so the clubhouse was like his sanctuary, so he could let his hair down and be himself in there. Even in his 90s, Mike, every night he would watch Cardinal baseball. And when we would have him on radio or television, I felt like calling the DeWitts and saying, you ought to hire this guy, but he because he's still the smartest baseball guy in our town. Right, and it was always, you learned so much just spending 15 minutes talking baseball with him, no matter what the arrow was. Yeah, and he never lost his edge. Yeah. You know, he always had just a little a point he wanted to get across that maybe nobody else had brought up. All right, we'll check back a little later. Whitey is survived by his wife of 71 years, Mary Lou, and three children, nine grandchildren, and 10 great-grandchildren. The family released a statement saying, Whitey spent his last few days surrounded by his family. We have so appreciated all of the prayers and support from friends who knew he was very ill. Although it is hard for us to say goodbye, his peaceful, peaceful passing was a blessing for him. Whitey Herzog reached every corner of the community and loved to talk baseball. Our Laura Barczewski is live outside Bush Stadium. She spent time with a local baseball historian who was close to Whitey, Laura. 
Mike, the newest generation of Cardinals baseball fans may have no idea who Whitey Herzog is, but a St. Louis baseball expert, Ed Wheatley, is making sure that this great man's legacy continues to be remembered and live on even through our youngest fans. His roots in baseball are deep. His roots in our St. Louis community are deep. And you know, I don't think he ever, ever forgot it. Baseball historian and author Ed Wheatley says from the beginning, Whitey Herzog loved baseball. The seed was planted in his hometown of New Athens, Illinois. He wasn't Whitey Herzog then, and his first name's Durrell. This is the game ball from the state championship. They lost to Granite City, um, but it signed Relly Herzog. Later, he came into the name Whitey for his light blonde hair. Along the way, he watered those seeds of baseball knowledge as a player for different teams across the country. Made it to the major leagues. That in itself is an accomplishment. That eventually led him home to the St. Louis Cardinals dugout where he blossomed into an incredible manager fans loved and the players wanted to go to bat for. But when Whitey got here in 80, 82, it had been a long time since there had been a World Series. And then he energized this town 82, 85, 87, but he energized all of baseball with Whitey Ball. He retired in 1990, but didn't stop caring about the community and Cardinals baseball. He communicated with people and they loved it. Making his legacy the perfect example for kids, detailed in Wheatley's book, Incredible Cardinals, and he certainly was. And that's why it's important to study and know your, your, your game and whether it's even a ball player or you're just a regular worker or doctor stay home mom, stay home dad, whatever, you work hard, that's the moral of the story of the book, then you can be incredible too. But it takes, and Whitey was one of these guys that became incredible because of what he did to learn the game and how he functioned. Whitey's legacy certainly lives on here at Bush Stadium in the National Baseball Hall of Fame and of course, the Cardinals Hall of Fame. Reporting live downtown, Laura Barcheski, five on your side. Our coverage of the life and career of Whitey Herzog continues now on KSDK.com and on 5 Plus. You can stream our 1990 special, Whitey, The End of an Era, on Roku or your Apple or Fire TV. Tonight, several families in O'Fallon, Missouri, are out of their apartments after a huge fire broke out this morning. It happened at the Enclave at Winghaven off Interstate 64. Robert Townsend talked to those who had just seconds to evacuate. It was a startling time for lots of people and their pets at this St. Charles County apartment complex. Well, the guy banged on the door uh, to, you know, get us out of here to evacuate the building. Ryan Sanders and his girlfriend jumped out of bed, ran outside and saw their building was on fire. I thought it was something that they could just put out real fast. But shortly before 11 Tuesday morning, the fast moving to alarm fire kept spreading across the building. Firefighters say when they got to the enclave of Wing Haven Apartments, the flames and thick smoke had reached the attic. Basically, the half of the side of the building of, of our buildings burnt to the crisp. Tenants in all 24 units had to be evacuated. Where are we going to go? Um, you know, what, what steps are first? Those are just some of the questions now on the minds of Summer Estes and her boyfriend. Their apartment has heavy water damage. That's a big inconvenience because I can't even get my work clothes out of my apartment. So it's not the, I don't know what to do. A neighbor says long before the huge fire broke out, someone in an upstairs third floor unit was grilling food at the time. Hours after firefighters put out the fire, we saw this scorched grill here on the grass. And as far as I've been told, somebody had a medical emergency and they took him to the hospital and left it cooking. And it uh, kind of went up in flames after that. Right now, the cause of the fire is still under investigation. Firefighters rescued two cats and two dogs, including this pooch that needed oxygen. Investigators found her in the apartment where the fire started. Nobody was injured, thankfully. Robert Towns at five years side. Right now, the Red Cross is helping 12 families. Investigators say some of the tenants may be able to return to the units tomorrow. Tonight, a Normandy middle school teacher is behind bars, accused of sexually assaulting a student. Christopher Daniels is charged with statutory rape and sodomy. According to court documents, the victim told her mom about the abuse. Investigators say Daniels confessed to the crimes. Just minutes ago, we heard back from Normandy schools. Officials tell us Daniels was immediately removed from the building after learning of the allegations. A worker at the St. Louis Juvenile Detention Center is now out of a job. He's accused of giving THC gummies to two teens in custody 
who had to be rushed to the hospital. New tonight, Brent Solomon is just back from speaking with a group working to educate on the dangers drugs have on young people. Brent? That's right, Mike. Patrick Harris worked as a child youth specialist at the jail. I've learned the 23-year-old had only been on the job since last month. Since this situation, earlier this month, he hasn't been back to work. These are the felony charges that former juvenile jail worker is now facing. Two counts of endangering the welfare of a child, creating substantial risk. Court records show the former child youth specialist gave THC gummies to two detainees under 17 who were in his custody here at the St. Louis Juvenile Detention Center. Court records show the teens became unresponsive. I don't know why an adult would provide a substance to a child, period. Nicole Dawsey is with Prevent Ed. The group just launched a campaign to help adults better understand the impact legal drugs like marijuana can have on children who cannot get them legally. It looks like the typical effects from getting high accelerated. So your heart rate increases pretty exponentially. You can get dizzy, you can get hallucinations, you can get really nauseous. For children, are those symptoms worse? Absolutely, young people can experience those symptoms at a, at a greater rate than adults. The campaign, which hopes to soon go statewide, is called In the Weeds. And as a matter of fact, we get that all the time. Well, it, 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 I'm not gonna die from it, so it can't be that bad. Well. No, while you're not likely to die from a cannabis overdose, an overdose means simply putting too much in your system that your body starts rejecting it. That can happen when you're taking an edible and you don't feel the effects. So you take a little bit more and you take a little bit more and then all of a sudden it hits you like a brick wall. Those detainees are now out of the hospital. Prevent Ed is now working with youth groups to spread awareness. They've even created parent kits on how to talk to your children about weed. I've placed that info for you on KSDK.com. A 